Hi, good morning. I'd like to take this opportunity just to share a passage with you in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. <clears throat> There's an interesting uh, uh, passage that uh, uh, Jesus uh, prays for his disciples in. In John 17, verse 20, Jesus says in the midst of that prayer, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And so not only on that, that night when Jesus was arrested and, and then taken uh, and tried and, and convicted and crucified the next day, but not only on that night was he praying for his disciples, but he was also praying for us. And uh, the truth of the matter is he ever liveth to make intercession for us. He's always praying for us. But uh, on this occasion, Jesus uh, prays for us as his disciples. Uh, he is... Uh, about to go to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. You find that in the very next chapter that they, they head out and, and Jesus does some praying about the, the cup of the wrath of God. Uh, but uh, he's spending some time uh, with his disciples and, and uh, he's comforting them about, uh, about what's going to take place. He's teaching them, taking advantage of this last opportunity to, to share some things with them and teach them uh, about some things that are uh, that are happening that are taking place in chapter 13 as he begins this this discourse uh, he he teaches them about servanthood you find in chapter 14 he teaches them about about salvation he teaches them about about heaven about their uh, their their eternal domain uh, he teaches them about the Holy Spirit um, numbers of things that Jesus shares with him he talks to them about uh, the importance of unity and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that this morning but in, in chapter 17, uh, he prays. It's Jesus' intercessory prayer. Uh, he begins his prayer at the beginning by, by praying for himself. Uh, he's uh, uh, praying in anticipation of rejoining the Father uh, in the glories of heaven, and he's, he's just praying for, for himself in verse 6. He turns his attention uh, to praying for, for his disciples, and, and uh, he didn't just pray for them that night. Again, he's praying for us as well that uh, that all the things that uh, that he wants for them would be true for us as well, and it's a critical it's a critical prayer. That's one of the last uh, prayers that Jesus prays. Again, he goes into the garden after this and and does pray uh, with his disciples. Um, but but there there are several critical things I think he prays about in this prayer for you and for me. Uh, he talks about he prays about commitment uh, in verse fourteen. He said, "I have given them thy word." And the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, <clears throat> but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil or from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them also into the world." And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Interestingly, as he's praying about their commitment, uh, he, he wants it to be marked by some things. And in all reality, if we really are committed, uh, then our commitment to Christ will be marked by a few things. He prayed that they would be separated from the world. Um, and, and what he's praying about is, is not that we move to some, uh, some, some commune on a hillside out in the middle of nowhere. That's not, that's not the, the separation he's looking for, and, and not necessarily that we tuck ourselves away in some mausoleum somewhere, uh, but he's, he's talking about the idea that we, we, we keep ourselves from the influence of the world and the influence of the prince of the power of the air, the evil one who influences the world. Um, we don't think like the world. We don't act like the world. We, we don't live like the world. We, we have a different perspective, a different mindset. We think differently than the world thinks. And I think that's been fairly obvious just in recent days, the, uh, the, the, the mindset, the perspective of those who know Christ and those who don't. There's, uh, there's the completely different way that you look at things, even in the midst of a pandemic. I mean, uh, you, you, you have a whole entirely different perspective if you know Christ. So we don't think the way they think. We have different values than the world values. Uh, that, that's being separated from the world. We, we have a different purpose. Uh, our purpose isn't about self. Our purpose is about Christ. It's not about, not about making ourselves comfortable, not about 
uh, gleaning and acquiring and achieving for self. It's all about doing what we do for the glory of God, for the glory of Christ, exalting him and honoring him. And then, then ultimately we have a different destination and that changes everything, a completely different perspective because we know where we're going to spend eternity. Uh, it's, it's hard to threaten us with the things of this world knowing that what we have awaiting us is far better than what we have here. And, and so, so he's praying that they'd be separated from the world. And, and, and he says, now I don't want you to take them out of the world, but I want you to keep them from the world. In, in other words, uh, even though we're in the world, we don't live for the world or we don't live like the world. We don't love what the world loves. We, we don't chase what the world chases and we don't value what the world values. But he also said, not only does he want us to be separated from the world, he wants us to be sanctified unto God because it's possible to separate yourself from something but then not focus on something else. And so the, the flip side of, of, of separation, or at least the, uh, the, the congruent side that he's looking for, is that we, we separate from the world but then we focus on God and the things of God. He becomes the, uh, the central focus. He becomes the focal point. Uh, the world's not what motivates us. It's not its riches, its fame, or its power that, that motivates us. Uh, we're motivated by, by the Lord and, and by his work, and that's what really fuels our fire, what really uh, determines what we do. We're more concerned about holiness than we are happiness. We're, we're more focused on ministry than we are our own personal desires. We're, we're worried about reaching a lost world uh, more so than reaching an income level. And uh, we're, we're not concerned about laying up treasures, treasures on earth. We're worried about laying up treasures in heaven. And so Jesus is praying for their commitment that they would be set apart unto him. They'd be separated from the world. Um, one of the realities that, that, that certainly is true in this world is, is most people are committed. I mean, in all reality, everybody to some degree is committed. But the thing is, we're committed to all sorts of things. Uh, we're committed to, uh, to family, we're committed to the job, we're committed to health, our own health, we're committed to, to sports, uh, we're committed to, to pleasure. Um, Jesus' concern was the focus of our commitment. And so, uh, so as he's praying, he wants our, our primary commitment to be him. And, and that ought to override, it ought to overrule every other commitment in life. And so the question this, this morning really is, what, what are you committed to? What am I committed to? What gets the most of our time? What, what, what gets the best of our resources? What, what really is the focus of our, of our mind, of our heart, of our life? And, and, and let me give you this quick thought. I think the reason the commitment is waning, uh, even in the church in our day, is because separation and sanctification are, are lacking. Uh, we don't separate from the world, and we certainly don't focus uh, consistently on Christ. In, in verse 17, Jesus gave some, some truths to help. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In verse 19, he echoes that thought, and for their, their sakes, I sanctima, sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth, which again, the word, thy word, is truth. And, and so Jesus is really in, intimating that uh, the lack of commitment to, to the truth, to the word, is what, uh, what really is fueling uh, the, the, the fact we're not separated and we're not sanctified unto him. If you don't know the word, you can't do the word. And quite honestly, there are many that are part of the church today that just don't know the word. And because they don't know it, they don't do it. And so Jesus prays that his people would be committed. He also prays for consolidation. In verse 20, again, he said, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Five times in those verses he uses the word one. His desire is that we would be one. He wants us to walk in unity. And to do that, there's some necessities. If we're going to be, if we're going to be one, if we're going to be united, uh, we, we, we must be able to, to disagree without being disagreeable. 
Uh, we, we've got to be able to discuss our differences face to face because we are going to have some, some different thoughts, some different ideas in different areas. We have to be able to let go of hurts and disagreements. We have to, we have to love one another just like we love ourselves. We have to refrain from gossip and backbiting if we're going to be one. Nothing destroys unity more than that. We've got to allow our others to, to have opinions which differ from our own. Uh, sometimes people react strongly to the, uh, the different opinions of others because they're not so secure in their own opinion. They're, it's, it's a tactic to, to thwart uh, uh, any, any disagreement that might come up. Uh, we don't have to be right all the time. We don't have to. And it requires us to practice the kind of forgiveness that we've received from God. And, and, and quite honestly, we don't mind receiving God's forgiveness, but sometimes we're pretty slow to give the kind of forgiveness that we've received. But all those things are necessities if we're going to be one as Jesus and his Father were one. Our unity, it's important because it's a living advertisement for the Lord. Our unity gives credibility that Jesus was who he said he was. It says to a lost world that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Son of the living God. And I would submit the flip side is true as well. If we're not united, followers of Christ, if we can't be one, then we're telling a lost world that Jesus really wasn't who he said he was. And that is an incredibly huge stumbling block. And I would warn us, we do not want to be a stumbling block uh, to, to the little ones, to those who don't know him. And so Jesus prayed that his people would have unity. The third thing he prayed about was not just commitment and consolidation. He prayed about completion. In verse 24, he said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Uh, he told them uh, that he was going to heaven. Already, told, already shared that with them. And, and, and here's what Jesus said. I want you to be there with me. Man, what a thought. Jesus wants me to be with him in heaven. He wants you to be with him in heaven. And, and, and that's not just some idle chatter, because Jesus doesn't do idle chatter. He really wants you to be with him in heaven. Well, that ought to be fairly obvious. That's why he left heaven in the first place and came to earth and became a man and was willing to, to be obedient to death on the cross because he wanted you to be with him in heaven. That's why he drank the cup of God's wrath. That's why he had the sins of mankind imputed unto him. It's why he took them and nailed them to the cross and, and yielded his life. He gave up his life. He, he surrendered his life. That's why he resurrected, that we might be with him for all of eternity. But in order for us to be with him for all of eternity, we have to be saved. And so Jesus' prayer included the idea that he wants everybody to give their heart unto Christ. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants everyone to know him. And, and so, so it's a plea from Jesus to get saved so you can spend eternity with him. But he also wants us to see him in all of his glory. Now, fellas, you've seen me in these, these earthly trappings, these earthly robes. But the rea reality is I want you to see me in my majesty, in my splendor and glory. I, I want you to see me in my, my divinity. <clears throat> and in order to do that, again, you have to be saved to get there. And so that night, that night with his disciples, Jesus prayed for you and he prayed for me. And he is still praying for us. He's praying that we'd be committed He's praying that we'd be consolidated, we'd be united together. He's praying that we would go on <clears throat> unto completion, that one day we'd be with him in heaven for all of eternity. That's his prayer for you. And I hope that gives you some consolation to know that, uh, that even though he prayed 2,000 years ago for us, that he is still making intercession for us. And I know we, we implore one another to pray for one another in, 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 in the things we're going through in life. But the reality is Jesus is always praying for us. Father, thank you. Thank you for your son. Thank you for his goodness. Thank you for his love for us. And Lord, there's no way we could ever, we could ever begin to question the love of Christ. And uh, Lord, you, you certainly have proved that over and over and over again, how much you love us, how much we mean unto you. I thank you for the reality that you're praying for us. Lord, I take comfort and consolation in that, uh, knowing, Lord, that, uh, that you are for us 
Uh, God, we just rejoice in you. And Father, I do pray that uh, you'd help us. Help us to be committed unto you. Lord, there are so many things that try to distract us and, and draw us away from you. But Lord, I do pray <clears throat> we would be committed unto you. We'd be separated from this world. And Lord, we'd be focused, sanctified unto you. Uh, God, I pray you'd help us to be united. May we be as one. May, may we be consolidated. And so, Father, help us to, to testify to a lost world that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, by our unity. And so, Father, help us to, uh, to do that. And, and God, I do pray that we'd be faithful to the end. Lord, that one day we'd be with you in eternity. Uh, Lord, that's certainly my prayer as I know it's your prayer. And so, Father, help us, I, I pray, uh, Lord, just to serve you faithfully, uh, that one day we can see you in all of your splendor and glory. Lord Jesus, that we can dwell with you for all of eternity. Thank you for your promises. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you for the joy that is ours. And thank you for this day. May we live it in your strength, and may we honor you in it, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. Uh, we are uh, uh, making our way through the month of April. Today is already the 24th of April. Hard to imagine that, but uh, let's continue to be faithful to the Lord. Uh, let's continue to watch out for one another, and uh, let's continue to pray and ask God to, to continue to use us and work in our hearts and lives. Let's just look for ways uh, to be the hands and feet of Christ and to make a difference in this world. We love you. God loves you. Hope you have a great day.